During the OtaQuest Connect event, we had the honour of interviewing the two directors of My Hero Academia, Kenji Nagasaki and Masahiro Makai. During the interview, they talk about their history in the anime industry, how they were both big fans of Jump as kids, and their process on My Hero Academia. So, to sum it all up, here's five things you need to know about the directors of My Hero Academia. The first thing you might be wondering is, why are there two directors in the first place? The reason is due to the massive amount of work involved in creating the show. Although it runs for a couple of seasons a year, the staff are always working on the show, and in 2018, Kenji Nagasaki was having to direct the films on top of that. This resulted in him getting sick from overwork. At the time, Masahiro Mukai was working on the second season of Blood Blockade Battlefront, when a producer asked if he'd be willing to help out on directing season 4. In this way, Nagasaki can work on overseeing the series series and working on the film without getting sick. Coincidentally, both of these directors were involved in Gundam in the past. For Kenji Nagasaki, he served as assistant director on Gundam 00 before being brought on to direct Gundam Built Fighters. It was his experience on that show that got him hired as the director of My Hero Academia. In the case of Masahiro Makai, he idolised Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomino when he was younger, and when he finally got to meet him as a member of the Gundam Seed Destiny staff, he apparently just scowled back. It almost seems like everyone has a grumpy Tomino story. My Hero Academia, being a bone show, can be a festival for great animation, and the directors specifically encourage this. When they approach animators like Yutaka Nakamura to do a scene, they explain generally what they're looking for, and then he'll go away and draw up a rough idea. They will then rewrite the scene to account for the liberties taken in the animation. In this way, they're treating the animators as storytellers and letting action take the forefront. Sometimes they do have feedback and changes, but trusting in animators is what makes My Hero Academia great. The first storyboard Mukai did for the show was the first episode of the fourth season. This was largely anime original, and Mukai was terrified that he'd be alienating fans right from the start. He admitted that he was crying while drawing the storyboards, but the fact that people enjoyed the episode was a massive wave of relief. It can't be easy jumping in part way to a series that people have already grown so attached to. While Hero Academia doesn't have much in the way of filler, there are some anime original heroes, especially in the movies. However, superhero comics have been a thing in the US for decades, and they specifically tried to not have them overlap with any of these classic heroes. For instance, in the first movie, they introduced the villain Wolfram, with the power to manipulate metal, but they were careful to make sure he didn't seem too similar to Magneto from the X-Men comics. There are multiple examples of this on the anime side, and they note that Horikoshi takes the same care with the manga as well. Thanks for watching OtaQuest in Japan. Feel free to subscribe to find out more about the art and creation of Japanese pop culture.